So number five is a circle question. As we can see from this, this diagram, we get a point C in the middle, which is minus five, six. That's the center of our circle. And then we get given this equation that we have to write with A and B and R for us to decide what they are. So what can we do? Well, because we worked with circles before, we know that this minus 5 here is going to be A, and this 6 here is going to be B. What is not clear is the radius, at least not immediately. So how can we find that out? Well, we can look here. We can look at this distance here. So we know that this, this x coordinate here is minus 5, and we know that this goes up to 6. So we can say with some certainty then, that this length here, because the center is out here, because this is the radius, this must be five units long. So our radius must be five. And then it's just a case of putting it in. We'll do it up here, question A. So we've got x minus minus five, minus minus five, all squared, then plus y minus 6 all squared is going to be equal to our radius squared. So you could say 25 or we can put 5 squared because they want it to look like this. So let's just simplify that out. There's only one thing we need to do. We make this x plus 5 all squared plus y minus 6 all squared is going to be equal to 5 squared. That is the form that they asked for. That's what we've given it. So we have answered it correctly. Let's move on to question B. Question B. So verify that this point, this point here, lies on the circle. So we have an x coordinate there and a y coordinate there. And we have an x and a y here. So let's just put those numbers in and it should all equal out. So we have minus 2 plus 5 squared plus 2 minus 6 squared should be equal to, this is going to be 25. So hopefully it is equal to 25. I think it will be. So we have 3 squared plus minus 4 squared is equal to 25. And we have 9 plus 16, which is equal to 25. So because 9 plus 16 is equal to 25, we need to say, therefore, let's go for turquoisey blue, therefore, therefore, P, the point P, lies on the circle, the circle. So it's crucial that you put that statement in there, some kind of confirming statement there at the end to get the mark there. So let's move on again to the next part. Find an equation of the normal to the circle. So the normal of the circle at point P. Where's point P? Well, it's going to be about here, something like this. This is going to be the point. This is going to be 2 here, and this is going to be minus 2 here, so that's going to be P. So a normal is going to be a line that goes from this point through the center of the circle like this, through the center of the circle, and then just carries on in this direction out here and carries on up here. So we have two points there. So we have the points, let's go down here for part II or part two. We have two points. We have the point minus five six and we have the point minus two two and we have to get a line that goes through both of those so what can we do with that well we can take the difference between x and y so we can take the gradient the gradient i'm going to put gradient here gradient is equal to the change in y the change in y over the change in 
x, which is going to be these two. So the change in y, 6 and 2, the difference there is 4. 6 minus 2 is 4. And then the gradient here, we're going to have minus 5 and 2. So instead of 6, take away 2 here, we've got minus 5, take away minus 2. So minus 5 plus 2. And you'll say, well, that's obviously a difference of 3 there. But it's important that it's a minus 3. And we'll see why in a minute. So we have 4 over minus 3 or minus 4 over 3. They are the same thing, of course. So let's let's change to green. We haven't used green yet. So we have our gradient here. We have points. So we can do y minus y1 equals m x minus x1. We seem to be using that a lot in this exam. So we have our points. Let's, let's take these points. You can take, you know, you could take the other points if you wanted to, but we'll take these ones. So minus y1 is going to be this here. It's going to be 2. Then m, m is our gradient, so minus 4 over 3. And then x minus minus 2, so plus 2 in there. Let's change colors again. So then let's simplify it out. We've got y minus 2 equals minus 4x over 3 plus, or minus, I should say. Let's, let's undo that quickly. Let's undo that. So we have minus 8 over 3 there. I'm going to move down a bit to give myself a bit more, more room. So we have that there. Let's change color again. So what can we do there? Well, we could potentially just add 2 and leave it like that, but I want to be a bit neater than that. So let's times everything by 3. I think so we're going to get 3y minus 6 equals minus 4x minus 8. And then let's add 6 to both sides. So we're going to get 3y is equal to minus 4 x minus 2 because minus 8 plus 6 is minus 2. So that's a kind of neater form without any fractions in it, although you don't have to. They haven't told us what kind of equation they want. They just said an equation. So you know any kind of form that you want to leave it in is a valid form. Last question, the midpoint of PC. So let's go back up to our, our diagram here. We have C over here, we have P down here, so we're going to go some midpoint, let me go in black. We're going to have some M here, some midpoint there, big M. So the midpoint is M. Determine whether the point P is closer to the point M or closer to the origin. So we have to find out where the midpoint is and then decide whether this point, this purple point, is closer to O, the origin, 0, 0, or whether it's closer to m. So we're going to need Pythagoras for that, I think. So the midpoint of m, well, let's take the middle of minus 5 and minus 2. What do we get when we add those together? Let's actually do it. Let's hot i, i, i. So minus 5 plus minus 2, so minus 2 over 2 is going to be equal to minus, that's going to be minus 7 over 2, so minus 3.5. That's going to be our x coordinate there. Let me change color. And then 6 and 2, the middle of those is going to be 6 plus 2 over 2, which is going to be 4. So that's going to be our y coordinate. So our midpoint, our m midpoint, is going to be minus 3.5, 4. That's going to be our m. So then how far away from 2, minus 2, 2, our point P, let's, you know what, let's make this neat. So let's write down point P. So point P is going to be minus 2, 2. And the way that we do that is Pythagoras' theorem, which you obviously know about already. So Let's do that. So the difference, so from P to M, from P to M, so P to M squared 
is going to be equal to the distance between the x coordinates. I hope you're following this. So 1.5 squared plus the distance between the y coordinates, so 2 squared there. Because what we've determined, if we go back up a bit, hopefully you can see this. So we've got our little triangle here, and we've got that x difference as being 1.5 and our y difference as being 2 so let's actually work out what that is 1.5 squared is going to be 3 over 2 squared so we're going to get 9 over 4 plus 4 9 over 4 plus 4 and then obviously we have to take the square root this gives a new color so p to m p to m is going to be the square root of, what is it going to be, 16 over 4 plus 9 over 4, so 25 over 4, so the square root of 25 over 4, which is going to be equal to 5 over 2, because you just square each bit, each part. So that's the difference from P to M, it's going to be 2.5. So let's go down a bit further and we can do the difference, this will be a bit easier, from P to the origin, so a new triangle. So we're going to get from P to O, P to O squared is going to be minus 2 squared plus 2 squared. That is going to be equal to 4 plus 4, so we're going to get 8 there. And then, uh, almost our last step, is going to be P to O is going to be root of 8. Root of 8. So we have uh, 5 over 2 there, and we have our root 8 there. And we just have to decide which one is bigger. So, I mean, there's any number of ways you can do that. Oh, I've gone a bit too far down. There we go. So there's any number of ways you can do that, but... Hopefully you just know from experience that 8 is going to be 2 root 2, and then root 2 is going to be 1.41 something something. So if you times it by 2, you're going to get 2.8 something. 2.8 is going to be bigger than 2.5. So root 8, root 8 is greater than 5 over 2. Therefore, we can say that P, P is closer closer to M. And that is our question finished. See you on the next video.